Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Protoss versus Protoss where we find ourselves on the map Jaganatha. Spotting here in the top right hand corner and playing with the red Protoss probes from Denmark, we have none other than Maxpex. His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue Protoss probes from Poland, he goes by the name of Geralt. Alrighty, so this particular game was recently played during the tournament Dreamhack 4. Apparently, it's a really good Protoss versus Protoss, so I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down. Now, of course, I don't know the result for this particular game, but right away, I'm kind of... I'm kind of leaning towards Max Pax, just because Max Pax over the last couple of months has really been on fire. He's been around for a couple of years now when it comes to the pro level of StarCraft 2, but really, over like the last year, he's been making a name for himself. So I just had a quick look, right? So there's this website called sc2revealed.com, which basically allows you to keep track of all of the different pro players and their current MMR on the ladder, as well as all of their different nicknames that they are playing under. And I just had a quick look. Maxpex apparently has reached a new peak MMR of 7,077, meaning that he is now part of the exclusive 7K MMR club. Now, I had a quick look, because I've mentioned this before in a previous video as well. I don't know if there's such a thing as an exclusive 7k MMR Discord channel or whatever, but it feels to me like there should be, because as far as I can tell, there's only been about a dozen players or so on the EU server that have, that have actually reached that amount of MMR. So, I probably forgot at least one or two of them, but as far as I could tell, Serral, 7,488, or 7,480, so that's his all-time peak MMR. Clem, 7,342. Raynor, 7,332. Hero Marine, 7,300. Showtime, 7,245. Spirit, also known under the name of Soul, 7,103. Neep, 7,041. And Lembo, 7,000 on the dot. So apparently Maxpex is, is, well, earlier this month, he was sitting at 7,077, which is his all-time, you know, all-time highest MMR ever. That's ridiculous. So he's 17 years old right now. On Aligalek, he's considered to be the rank 15 in the world, which is... <laughs> considering he's never won, like, anything big, um, I think it's just a matter of time, but considering he's never won anything big, unlike, you know, those other players I just mentioned, there's no denying that I think Maxpex is, you know, gonna win something anytime now. I, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll find out together. But at the very least, if there's anything you take away from this video, just remember that Maxpex is really good at the game. Geralt, um, his peak MMR of all time is 6,831, which is uh, definitely very respectable, of course. Most of the guys that I cast on this channel regularly, uh, they're sitting right around 6, 7, 6, 8, 6, 9 or so. All right, so what exactly is going on? Because I've been blabbering onwards here for a little while. Geralt right here blocking his opponent's expo from going down. Maxpex going for the low ground wall off, whereas Geralt right here is opting to go for the high ground wall instead. Pylon here into apparently a cybernetic score as well. Turns out if you kill the pylon, the, the uh, cyber core will actually continue building as well, even when it is unpowered. So this is just a way for Geralt to make sure that that expansion is not acquired early. He scouts out right now as well inside of the main base of Max Pax that indeed it is going to be a Oracle opener. So that Oracle is going to be able to fly across the map relatively quickly. Geralt will complete the wall off here as well, just to make sure that the adept of his opponent will not be able to run in. Shield battery is going to finish up. By the time at the very least that the Oracle gets across the map, I'm sure. And Geralt is actually now proxying a pylon on the other side of the map. Okay. So if you see, he cancels that pylon now that the Adept is gone. He needs to get the, uh, the Stalkers in the right position at the right time as well. But I think that everything is lined up beautifully here. Shield battery will finish up. Well, I mean, if the Oracle would go in right away, it would have finished up right at the correct moment. Geralt actually waiting right here on the edge of his main base. Instead, it's going to come in from the right side. But, I mean, this is already defended. Nicely done. Obviously, Oracles, though, yeah, they have a skill called Revelation that allows you to keep track of exactly what is happening in that location for at least a little while. Is Max Pack's gonna find the pylon? Looks like he will, so that's nice as well for him, making sure that he's not uh, gonna be caught with his pens down with a couple of adepts or something along those lines that will just shade into the natural expansion. So even though there was a little bit of action here early on, it looks like both players right now are just transitioning towards the good old standard. Don't do it, Zealot man. Don't do it, man. You've got so much to live for. My life for ire. Well, there you go. He's given his life. I can tell you that much. 
All right, so Protoss versus Protoss usually starts off, if it doesn't start with any cheese, with a couple of random units that you sent towards the other side of the map every once in a while. If you can get an advantage at that point, you can oftentimes just straight up win the game. This is kind of the case with all the mirror matchups in StarCraft 2. If you make a small little mistake early on, it can just cost you the game straight up, because if you're making the same units, right, if you have the same amount of units as well, it's very easy to, uh, yeah, accidentally lose one or two of them, and then you may very well find yourself... Uh, with a much smaller army. I mean, five Stalkers going up against seven Stalkers is obviously going to be heavily in favor of the guy with seven Stalkers. That being said, Shield Batteries, of course, in this matchup are absolutely massive. So if you get the Shield Battery in the right position at the right time, looks like there's a Stasis Ward inside of the main base. Stasis Ward here in the back as well. Does Geralt see it? He does not. So a couple of units will be stasis here, but... Mm, yeah, there's still enough Stalkers left over inside of the main base as well. But he can't really capitalize on that stasis. Instead, apparently, it's now going to be a third Nexus here from Geralt. And I wouldn't be surprised here if Maxpex decide to go, yep, there for his own as well. Bit of a different location. He decides to go for the triangular base instead. Geralt expanding horizontally, but shouldn't really matter all too much. Anyway, so after this early game shenanigans, usually we transition towards a Blink Stalker. Now, Blink Stalker control is very tricky, right? Because if you're both playing with Blink Stalkers, obviously you don't really have much of a speed advantage. It all comes down to picking the right engagement at the right time and then controlling your units better than the opponent. However, the follow-up to this is usually Disruptors. And that's where the game gets very explosive. Blink Stalker Disruptor versus Blink Stalker Disruptor is one of my absolute personal favorite um, unit compositions that we see in StarCraft 2. It's also an absolute disaster to play. So if you've never played it before, um, just know that you can accidentally blow up your own stuff if you're not careful. Now you could definitely transition to watch some other stuff as well. Okay, so Max Pex is going for charge here, as well as the Dark Shrine right now. Fair enough. Robo Facility does come up. Dark Templar, of course. Even with detection. They're still like, you know, glorified zealots without charge, right? They still have an insane amount of DPS. So just having detection out in the mid game is not necessarily enough. One photon cannon, for example, I mean, you can plant it down. There can be even a shield battery, but uh, yeah, the Dark Templar will just kill it, right? If you're not careful, so. DTs, always a good option in this matchup as well, if you can get them out. Anyways, Robo Facility is going to finish up. Is there already a Robo here for Geralt? Yeah, there is. So, he's going to be able to get himself a bunch of additional gateways. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to be seeing a Robo base coming up as well in a little bit for both of these. Templar Archives here instead for Geralt. Okay. Fair enough. I've been playing a little bit of StarCraft 1 myself recently. And one thing I kind of forgot about is that in StarCraft 1, in order to make Dark Templar and High Templar, you just need one structure. So, you just need the Templar Archives. I mean, it kind of makes sense. In StarCraft 2, that would be utterly broken if they decided to change that, and the Dark Shrine is no longer necessary. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny how that works. It's the same, actually, in StarCraft 1. Like, if you get a couple of DTs out, um, yeah, even if your opponent has detection, they can still absolutely wreak havoc. Anyways, there's that Robo Bay that I was talking about. The problem is, right, pushing into these locations is very tricky. Even though there is charge done for both of these, well, soon anyway, um, even though charge will be done, you can go for a push, but oftentimes fighting into shield batteries, and in this case as well for max spec stasis wards, it can become an absolute disaster, so expending most of the time is a little bit safer. So despite the fact that this oracle didn't really deal any damage here early on, it still has been keeping tabs on that opposing army, it's been scouting around the map, and it's been putting down a bunch of stasis wards. So the Stargate opener, once again, I mean, it always seems like the superior choice in pretty much every matchup. I always like it. It's really, really strong. Anyways, there it is. The Disruptor. Okay, Geralt has a uh, Observer actually in pretty much a perfect spot. This likely will not be scouted. So, shoot better. Well, maybe it's actually going to be Invasion right there of the, of the Photon Cannon. The Photon Cannon's over there. Maybe he's going to be able to pick this off with a Stalker. Either way. Looks like uh, our blue protos here from Poland has decided to get a little bit adventurous. He's already finished up his own third Nexus. Relatively even game though, all things considered. Couple of Dark Templar apparently are, uh, well, cloaked. The Invisible Men 
They're ready to go. Yeah, I think the Observer did indeed get spotted. I saw a couple of Stalkers blink there. Good detonation as well there by Geralt. He decides to blink on top of the Disruptor. So far, the Disruptors will live. That battery overcharge there in the back, super helpful. That being said, Geralt does still have a very large army, and it looks like he successfully cut his opponent off. At the same time, the Dark Templar have made their way across the map, and this is kind of what I was talking about. Yeah, the Dark, uh, the dark Templar rather, are just going to be able to kill that easy-peasy. A couple of units will be recalled. A few of the units apparently also got caught in a stasis. So I think that Geralt will actually take a pretty significant hit here. Not only does he lose, uh, well, not actually too much at home, but he is, I think, going to lose two of these uh, Archons and also three of those Zealots. Quite painful. <laughs> Look at the Zealots around the side trying to charge in. Not going to happen. But that's a nice little lead right there for Max. So real quick, Purification Nova, the way it works is that it's on a cooldown on the Disruptor. When you throw the ball out, the Disruptor itself will not be able to move while that ability is channeling. After it's done channeling, though, for about, a, I don't know, two seconds or so, it basically explodes in a big area. However, if the Disruptor is killed while the Purification Nova is channeling, the Disruptor Purification Nova will be cancelled and obviously the unit will be killed. Um, and on top of that, it also deals friendly fire. So a lot of abilities in StarCraft 2 do not deal friendly fire, but this is one of them that do. So, or that does, rather. So if you, uh... Yeah, if you're like me, you'll probably accidentally blow up your army multiple times. Which is why that Blink Stalker Force is really scary, right? Because usually, you have your Stalkers in the front, you send the Disruptors from the back through the Stalkers and then Blink behind it. That's a really good way of, like, you know, trying to throw your opponent off guard and tricking them, but it's also a really good way of accidentally blowing up your own stuff. I uh, can tell you that from personal experience, it's not a nice feeling. You feel like an absolute clown. All right. Oh, 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 oh! That's risky. Yep. A little bit too far forward. I love that, actually. He's actually bowling through the acceleration zones. A uh, couple of losses here and there. Few Dark Temple on the right side. Actually, quite a few. Six DTs here in total. Two Photon Cannons this time around. We also do have a few Zealots on the other side of the map, but I think Geralt may have just all army hotkeyed those back, which is a little bit unfortunate. While this zoning is going on, though, the DTs are also going to town over here. Stalkers are warped in, but this is what I'm trying to get at, right? Stalkers don't really do that hot. And while you're looking at, you know, the, the third base here, obviously these players are still busy microing those disruptors and stalkers. It's very dangerous. Max Pack seems to be gaining a small edge that he's building on. Still, though, one disruptor hit can change everything. Ah, oh, yeah. Love watching this matchup. Don't really like playing it so much. That was absolutely perfect. <laughs> Just finished warping in. Nicely done right there. Dude, he's going heavy on the Dark Templar. There's 9 DT somewhere. Okay, they were warped in apparently over at the 4th base. Apparently he's like, you know what? Those first, DT, uh, these first like 3 DTs or so that went in went great. The 6 did quite better, or quite a bit better as well. What about like 10? <laughs> <laughs> What's better than two Dark Templars? Three Dark Templars. What's better than three? Six. What's better than six? About a dozen. Well, Geralt apparently now also has his own invisible men with capes. So they're going to be heading on over towards what seems to be the other side of the map as well. DTs, though, went towards the bottom right-hand corner to try and see if there was maybe already a fifth. Couple of these disruptors coming in from the site. DTs, once again, have gotten into the base. There's only one pylon really powering this, but he decides to go after the Nexus. If you don't pay attention yet, yeah, the Nexus will end up going down. Disruptor hit, though, coming in from the flank. Geralt, oh my god, loses a ton of stalkers there of his own. He tried to hallucinate a couple of Colossi there to maybe try and force his opponent to back off, but that was a lot of stalkers that just exploded in a heartbeat. Max Pex, while not perfect, seems to be a little bit better when it comes to his control. The Dark Templar! Oh, <laughs> even without detection, Purification Nova does not care, will also be destroyed. Whew. And so far, it looks to me like the person that recommended this game to me is a bit of a Max Pax fanboy, huh? <laughs> For good reason, though. There's like one Danish viewer really excited right now, bouncing up and down in their chair as they're watching this game. I mean, to be fair, there haven't really been a lot of Danish pro gamers. Okay, that was not good for Max. There haven't been a lot of Danish pro gamers. And to then have a guy, you know, rise from relative... Oh god, I thought for a second he was gonna blink forward. From relative uh, obscurity into, you know, one of the top ranking positions on the EU server. That is... that is pretty sick. 
Geralt, by the way. I just had a quick look at his Liquipedia page as well before starting up this cast. Well, apparently he's got a couple of DTs in the top left and corner. He's apparently not even a full-time StarCraft pro. So, as good as he is, because he's been, like, looking extremely strong recently, he's apparently a full-time law student. Ac assuming his, his Wikipedia page is, is correct. Anyways. Quite impressive. A lot of stalkers here on the other side. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That would drive me crazy, though. Like, if I was a pro gamer, oh, right, which I evidently, well, I'm not a tournament, I, I guess, I guess technically speaking, I play video games for a living, but it's a little bit different. Anyways, it would drive me nuts if I was, like, a student and then also a player at the same time and then just below the tippity top of the skill level, you know what I mean? Because, like, Geralt is really, really good, but I would always be wondering, like, where would I be if I, if I was playing full time and I didn't have, like, these other, you know, Ooh, Disruptor! Oh my god, massive Disruptor hit right there from Max. Jeez, Max Bex. Out controlling his opponent like an absolute champ with those Disruptors of his. That control, I, I just want to once again emphasize how hard that is. It is so easy to accidentally mess up. Which is kind of ironic because a lot of people are like, Protoss, F2A move, race. <laughs> LUL, Keck W. <laughs> <laughs> try an F2A move this, man. Give it a try. See how it goes. <laughs> you won't live for very long. I can tell you that much. I love how Dark Templar... Like, I've noticed this in a bunch of Max Bex's games. I casted a game where he played on Blackburn not that long ago against a Terran player, I believe. Yeah, it was against a Terran player. Anyways, um, I'll go ahead and post a link to that video. If I can find it down below in the description of this one. But basically, he's been making Dark Templar part of his core unit composition. Which is really cool. Like, in a way, they really are like stronger zealots, especially when you have that blink upgrade. I mean, you can usually get them out. Oh, oh, pfft. okay. Thought for a second he wanted to tar uh, target the second disruptor there as well. <sighs> Obviously, blinking late is better than blinking early, but <sighs> blinking too late is bad. Again, speaking from personal experience. Oh. Yep. Ooh, he's trying to target firing him down. You gotta also keep in mind the shield batteries there. Especially with battery overcharge. Okay, Stalker's coming in from the side again. Couple of DTs waiting behind the rock. Max Pax has been at the front for a really long time, and I wonder if he's overstaying his welcome. He is making a transition, though. So there is now a transition towards Stargates coming up, as well as apparently... Well, another Stargate, that is. As well as apparently the plus one flyer upgrades. And there's the carriers. Okay. So he starts up three carriers here. Carriers take a long time to produce. He tries to target fire down his base. Battery overcharge though, tries to keep it alive, but the DTs, they have so much damage output. And Garald once again loses an expansion. Oh, jeez, man, it's so scary. Once again, loses an expo. The carrier transition is a, is a finicky one though. The problem is, right, Geralt already has a lot of anti-air. They're right here, right? They're well upgraded. He's gonna be able to blink underneath the DTs if he's uh, in the right spot at the right time and just pick those capital ships off one at a time, easy peasy, right? The, the problem is, if you have enough carriers, like at some point once you reach critical mass, the carriers will absolutely destroy all of the stalkers. That's why those upgrades are so important. Especially the attacking upgrades, because every single inter uh, intercept a carrier ship, so they carry eight of them each, when they're fully uh, maxed out anyway. Uh, they all benefit from, you know, each of those upgrades, which is just massive. Anyways, yeah, so Max Pax decide to sit, uh, decides to sit back right now. This is definitely Geralt's time to shine. Geralt's army is still looking huge. He's got a good set of upgrades on them as well. And right now, I mean... We are kind of in that awkward state where a lot of supply... Like, that's that's another thing, I guess, with carriers. Right now, there's three carriers on the production tab. Obviously, that already counts towards the total supply. But since they're so supply-heavy, the supply count can be a little bit deceiving until the units are actually out. No real way right here for uh, Max to apparently defend the top left-hand corner. I mean, he's got a couple disruptors actually coming in from the side. But I guess that is main, his main line of defense. Keep in mind, obviously, recall is an option. 18 probes, by the way, ended up uh, going down right there. A few probes will be killed here as well on the side of the blue player. Well, he decides to not recall. 
that keeps a couple of these units behind. Based on the left side, also acquired here by Geralt. And we do now also see him sending a few zealots to watch this base. And that's actually huge. He still has most of his army on the other side of the max. Or on the other side of the map. Max Max right now forced to go back home, it seems. Okay, blinks on top of this. Ooh, almost kills the uh, observer. A couple of defensive Dark Templar now also warped in. Forcing those zealots to back off. But already a ton of workers were killed. Both players actually losing a relatively similar amount of stuff here. Geralt's thinking about fighting this. Keep in mind, once again, a lot of that supply is caught up in the production tab here. I think you should wait, Max. Yeah, it's it's deceiving, man. He doesn't really... Uh, he probably looks at the supply count right here. A couple of disruptors coming in from the back. Geralt takes a huge hit right there. Or, or deals a huge hit, as opposed to his opponent's disruptor army. And that means all of a sudden that that carrier army is looking quite vulnerable as well. Do you target fire down the interceptors? No, you don't really want to. You instead force that recall right there as you pick off the carriers one at a time. Max Pax on the left side of the map as well. Send in a couple of reinforcement. Will he be able to kill the 9 o'clock base? I guess he will. Okay. That disruptor flank was so huge. Now, all of a sudden, Max Pax is caught with his pants down, though. Uh, okay. Kills one of his own pylons there to try and, I guess, free his probes. Those probes were probably derping in the, in the main base here for a bit. So maybe Max's eco wasn't as good as it could have been either. Yarold right now is smelling blood in the water. He knows he needs to strike while the iron is hot, right? So if he waits here until, once again, that critical mass is reached, uh, it's going to be real tricky to kill all of those, uh, all of those carriers. Okay. Couple of DTs here of Geralt on the other side of the map as well. The fact that he has lost so many Nexi though really sucks. He's got barely any income right now. If you look right here at the income, I guess he doesn't have that much less than his opponent. Oh, maybe he's even got a small advantage. I don't know. Either way, carry account slowly growing. Can you blink back the weakened units? I think that would be nice. That being said, obviously, there's a lot of other things going on here. Disruptor coming in from the side. Blink currently on cooldown. Just barely not in range. Yeah. When all the interceptors are deployed like that, they can deal so much damage. Okay, he decides to target fire down one, two. Is he going to be able to get a third one as well? I think he will. Carry is obviously super expensive. Fourth one in a lot of trouble now as well. And that just barely stays alive with five hit points to its name. Okay. Max Max is kind of broke though. Even though he hasn't lost nearly as much stuff as his opponent. He's only really got this base mining right now. And then a couple of leftover mineral fields. Gawal is soon going to have the same amount of money. Both players doing a bunch of long-distance mining here for a while in this game. That being said, if you look at the army supply count right now, we're talking 104 <laughs> worth right here for Max Pax versus 39 of Geralt. Geralt instead decides to go for the counterattack, which makes a lot of sense. Max Pax does have an observer up ahead as well, so he can see that his opponent doesn't have an observer. So a couple of DTs warped in might very well help out. Either way, once again, a ton of probes end up getting killed. Disruptors. Ooh, okay. Free disruptor in the middle of the map. Always nice. Recall was used right here to the last mining expansion of Geralt. So at this point, um, our Protoss player in red doesn't have much money anymore. The same can be said for Geralt, but he's got a fresh expo that is currently mining. The problem is that he doesn't have much of an army, and soon it seems like he won't have a main base either. How exactly is Geralt going to clean up this force? That's my main question here. I don't think he's going to have a very easy time doing so. Oh, leading it right there to the ramp as well to try and prevent those units from blinking down. Geralt killed the Nexus in the top left hand corner here with a Stalker Ball. Not bad at all. But the problem is this is where, where, where all of the production used to be, right? These Zealots are going to stay behind. I love it. Keeping the Zealots around for a little while longer to try and, uh, yeah, just, you know, deal max amount of damage and shut down the production here of the player in blue. Is there enough right now for the ooh, for the red player to finish off the final units here of Geralt? If he can clean up this army, I'm pretty sure that at that point he can kill everything else as well. Zealots apparently done mostly in the main base, but GG is cold. As Geralt realizes that he does not have enough army to clean all of this up. And because of that, it's going to be Max Pax who obtains the victory. If you enjoyed this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.